The rationale for conducting the vision study was that metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer or prostate cancer that has progressed through hormonal therapy is one of the most common causes of uh, death from cancer in men and therefore represents a real unmet medical need for which there are only a limited number of treatments that will prolong life. Uh, so this, there, this fills a gap in the medical armamentarium that's really necessary to improve how men with metastatic CRPC survive. Lutetium-177 PSMA-617 is really a novel uh, drug for prostate cancer. It's the first tumor-directed radioligand therapeutic for prostate cancer. The way that it works is it targets a molecule called prostate-specific membrane antigen, or PSMA. Um, and it's the first time we've been able to target the tumor directly using a radioligand therapy. So the drug targets PSMA, which sits on the prostate cancer cells of both primary and metastatic disease throughout the disease course, and also regardless of disease distribution. So it can target disease in bone, in nodes, and in viscera. And it carries a payload of something called lutetium-177, which emits a type of radiation therapy called a beta emitter. So it, uh, when you, it's an injectable, you inject it into a vein. It circulates around the body, targeting prostate cancer cells with, wherever they may be, and then irradiates them with uh, lethal doses of radiation to the cancer. This resulted in prolonging life in men with metastatic CRPC by, virt by uh, a degree of 38%, that, it that is, it reduced the risk of death by 38%, improving the median survival from 11.3 months to 15.3 months. And it also reduced the risk of radiographic progression or death by 60% improving median RPFS from 3.4 months to 8.7 months. So um, the control arm of course was standard of care uh, and standard of care therapies needed to exclude chemotherapy, immunotherapy and bone seeking radiopharmaceuticals because we didn't have combination data on the safety of lutetium-177 PSMA-617 with the standard of care. And the randomization was two to one standard of care plus lutetium-177 PSMA-617 versus the standard of care alone. I should say that a unique aspect of this trial was that patients were selected for success in the sense that before going undergoing randomization, they had a PSMA-directed PET scan in which patients with positive PET scans were permitted into the study and those patients who looked like they didn't have, or that they did have significant components of their tumors that were PSMA negative, they didn't enter the study. So this approach is really a type of personalized medicine where you perform the image in order to identify patients who have the target and treat them with the targeted therapy while excluding those patients who, looks like, who look like they don't have the target. And so those patients don't get unnecessarily treated. The question is how feasible will this be uh, to implement in practice in the future? The first thing is the question about whether PSMA scans will be available on a national level or even whether we don't know whether the FDA will require them or not, but certainly the, the, this study did. So PSMA's PET-CT is right now, in terms of approval, limited to two centers in California. However, we anticipate that PSMA PET will be approved nationally very, very soon. And so will be then available on a national level for patients to receive uh, going forward. The second thing is what will be necessary to treat these patients with the therapeutic drug itself. And um, this requires really multidisciplinary collaboration and care between the medical oncologist, nuclear medicine physicians, and in some communities, communities, radiation oncology. So some component of that will involve identifying the patients and then 
taking care of them and their clinical needs. And another component is the treatment. And that, you know, how those roles will get divided up, of course, remains to be seen. Um, and it depends on the community's resources as, as well, like how, ac how accessible to a medical oncologist versus a radiation oncologist versus a nuclear medicine physician a community has. But it will require that multidisciplinary co collaboration and cooperation. And ultimately, that does benefit the patient in many other ways other than this therapy itself. Mm -hmm.